Hello guys, girls, and unbinary pals, welcome back to my channel, and today I wanted to make a series that goes over all the niche markets in Final Fantasy XIV individually. Firstly, I also endgame craft, but niche markets are particularly my favorite because a lot of people can do them, whether or not you're a high level, max level, or not, whether you have a ton of investment or you don't have barely any guild to start with at all, and this first video will go over crafted trial weapons across all the expansions. I'll include lists, recommended items, and everything that I list in the video will be of course down in the description below. So with that being said, let's get into it. So to start, these will always be relevant and current, whether it would be a form of new weapons throughout the brand new patches, old ones that remain popular, or re-releases of previous trial weapons for Gunbreaker, Dancer, Sage, and Reaper. And of course, all the lists that are down below will be updated whenever a new trial weapon is released within the future patches. First off, we can start with Stormblood and Shadowbringers crafted weapons. Now for now, I am grouping Shadowbringers and Stormblood together because we don't have very many Shadowbringers crafted weapons yet. Indeed, we only have one, but of course, later on as the expansion progresses and we get a more fleshed out Shadowbringers list, this would of course separate from the Stormblood weapons because Stormblood trials will only get easier. Therefore, there will be a lot more trial materials on the market since it is easier to go inform them, but for now, Stormblood and Shadowbringers are grouped together. But here are the pros and cons with this set. The cons are it requires a lot of time for farming, and if you're not going to go ahead and farm them yourself, you're going to be spending quite the investment per each trial item. Now, of course, Hades is the most expensive for one aura site, while in Stormblood, the highest these trial materials go for is around 400k. Also, these sell slightly slower than other cheaper weapons. Now, this applies more for the Hades weapons since they are the most expensive weapons on this list. There are above 1 million per each piece, and while something is that expensive, it will sell slower. But you're getting a higher return every time you do sell it, so all you have to do is maintain your undercutting. You don't have to be super religious about it, but just enough so you can guarantee that you'll be the one to sell it first. Now, the pros are it requires an investment, therefore it is a barrier of entry. With Heaven's Word items and Aroma Born items, they're very easy to get, and you can usually solo these bosses. With this, you either have to farm with other people, or you have to invest quite a bit to actually start crafting these recipes, which means less people are fighting with you for each weapon. Another pro is that you can also go with a group and farm these trial items yourself. It is especially very fast with Stormblood and with Hades. While it's not as fast as Stormblood trials, you can still make a ton just from the trial item. And of course, the next pro is that you have a larger margin of profit Per weapon. Now, if you're at least level 80, you can start with the Hades weapons if you do plan on farming the trial item yourself, or you have a large investment, which we will go see ourselves when we go and take a look at the list. Next up will be the Susanna weapons. They just came out patch 6.1, so they are relatively new, but there are hardly anyone posting these weapons, and particularly, I would look for Dark Knight, Red Mage, Sage, Reaper, Gunbreaker, Dancer, White Mage, Black Mage, Warrior, and Machinist. For me, these tend to sell the quickest, but of course, take a look at the price history, take a look at the sell history, and determine which sells for the most and the most often on your server. Next would be the Byako weapons, and finally, the Tsukiyomi weapons as well. These usually tend to sell the best, but again, take a look at what's best on your server, which we're gonna go ahead and do with the Team craft list. And like with all lists, this list will be down in the description below. I have the Shadowbringers trail weapons separately from the Stormblood weapons, and I will be updating each of these lists with every new item that will be released in each patch whenever they do come out. Now, if you want to price scan, of course, click the blue dollar sign next to spending, and then go down to earning, and of course, 
take a look at the price to craft whenever you were deciding which one to go ahead and start with. Personally, I don't really mind if something sells slowly. I'd rather sell a whole lot of items that sell slowly, but each item is worth more. So all of them are around 1 million to go ahead and craft. And now we can see which one is the most expensive. And right now it seems to be the samurai weapon. So even though you are spending 1 million to go ahead and craft this, you are making 785,000 back in profit with just one craft. Now, if you did want to go ahead and craft one of each of these, you will be spending 16 million gil, but you will be making a profit of 7.7 .7 million. So of course, this is a great list if you already have a full load of gil to start with, or you're going to go ahead and farm these materials yourself. But if not, I do think the Stormblood weapons are better for a mid-sized budget. And if you have a low size budget, then the Aroma Born weapons and Heavensward weapons would be even better. So now let's go and check the Stormblood weapons. Now here is the Stormblood weapons and I know it does say 18 million needed for spending but this is five times the amount of weapons in this list. So if you wanted to craft one of each of these weapons you'll be spending 18 million but you will be getting back in total 25.7 million which is a heck ton. But of course we will go ahead and take a look at what is going to net us the most profit by looking at the price to craft. Now if you do indeed have a mid budget you can go for any of these. All of them sell very well. If you are on the lower side, I do recommend going for the Susano weapons. Susano is very easy to farm for. There are a lot of parties doing it right now and the Susano trial item is relatively cheaper than the rest. But again, I personally recommend the Susano, Yakov, and Tsukiyomi weapons if you want to go ahead and craft them. Now we can get into Heaven's Sword. These are a lot cheaper to craft and you can still make a very good profit. You can also solo a lot of these bosses with the max level DPS or if you're a warrior and a paladin or a tank or a healer, I doubt you will have an issue. When you do solve these bosses, make sure to desynthesize the weapons that you get. Now, I always do it on my paladin. I open the coffer at my paladin, although I know the shield won't give you a trial item. It will still give you an ingot or demi materia that you can sell for a guild. But the longsword or opening the coffer on any other class and desynthesizing that weapon, you will have a chance to receive the trial item itself. And for heaven sword items, dark knight, white mage, Red Mage, Mage, Reaper, Samurai, and Ninja do tend to sell the best. But of course, let's go ahead and take a look at the list. And here is the Heaven's Word Weapons list. Now, if you spend 2.3 million, you can get that 12.2 million, which is a great amount for the amount invested. Although, of course, with Glamour, you always need to check whether or not you are crafting only high quality or only normal quality. Since it's Glamour, it doesn't matter. People will buy normal quality over high quality if it is indeed the cheapest because you're not buying this for snap. Personally, I really love the horde items and you can craft a seeing horde axe for 27,000 and get back 103,000. And again, you only have to be at level 60 to craft these items. And of course, you do need a master book for each class that is required for that weapon. And we will go over the intermediates in just a second after we talk about the Realm Reborn weapons. But of course, you can take a look and see Luminous Fiber costs 1.9k to craft, but you can make back 5k gil per one since it costs 6.9k per each piece. So these intermediates are popular because they re-released the of the round weapons which require a luminous fiber and some other materials that will go over. The people are buying them so they can craft these items quickly. Now we can go on to a realm reborn. Now a realm reborn does tend to be hit or miss with a lot of the crafted trial weapons since they do require a few expensive items such as grand company items, boss specific materials, and other Thing. But you can one hit farm a lot of the Vermeer Born bosses with a Blue Mage. You can also farm them very reliably with a max level care. You can still make a lot of money if you target the right items. And there's not really anyone crafting these. Not as many as some other trial weapons. I think Heaven's Word tends to be the most popular out of all the trial weapons to craft. But Vermeer Born items still tend to be relatively cheap to go ahead and craft. But you don't have as much competition. Now my favorites tend to be a lot of the Mogul weapons, and they usually are more expensive than the other trial weapons, especially the Mogul Mog Fort and the Mogul Mog Tana. The Mighty items are also very good. This is from specifically Remove, and also the Vortex ones do, do look pretty good and they sell decently as well. But now we can go ahead and take a look at the list. So if you went ahead and crafted each of these weapons, you'd be spending 1.5 million, but you would make that 2.6 million, which is not the largest margin of profit, but you only need to be at level 50, and a lot of these items are relatively cheap to go ahead and invest.
contestant. Now right away I can go and see that the Mighty Thunderstorm it costs 20.3k to craft but you can get that 220,000. So with Aroma Born weapons you really have to keep your eyes peeled for these better ones instead of crafting one of each instead of not paying attention and end up kind of losing time with crafting a not as popular weapon also undercutting that weapon. Usually just go for the best ones and stick with those. And finally now we can look at the intermediates. Now a lot of these intermediates are actually worth quite a bit on its own. Specifically I look at the high mithrite ingots, the wolfram ingots, and of course the luminous fiber. But there are a lot more. All you have to do is look at the list and look at the pre-crafts. See how much it is worth to even just go ahead to go ahead and craft a few of these along with your weapon. And that was everything about crafted trial weapons. Thank you guys so much for watching and hopefully this can open your eyes to a new horizon of a different type of market in Final Fantasy XIV. I hope you make a heck ton of cheese with this video and of course like, comment, and subscribe if you want to and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye!